What is social capital and how do we use it? First of all, there is no single social capital theory. In fact, there's a lot of contradicting and confusing theory out there trying to explain what social capital actually is. From a 30,000 foot perspective, social capital is what provides access to resources embedded in social relationships. Social capital enables people to mobilize these embedded resources to facilitate action. So social capital theory deals with three distinct concepts. The first concept is that of a resource. A resource can be anything that allows someone to get something done. It can be a thing, a person with influence, a piece of software or yet something else. Let's assume you need a camera. You don't know anything about cameras, but a friend of you does. You're very likely to reach out to that person to ask his or her opinion as to what you need. Or say you're looking for a new job. One strategy is to explore through friends and people you know if there are any opportunities out there for you and if you could potentially get an introduction. Or, as a third example, you might have a good idea for a new business. Once you start talking to a lot of your contacts, sanity check your idea or enrich it, your idea starts taking shape or you might potentially find your first customer. The camera you'd buy, the job you'd be getting, or the business you'd build are determined by large part through the resources in your network that you're invoking in the process. The second concept is structure of the network, or its so-called topology. Your social network comprises of people and their relationships. The size of your network depends primarily on you, your preferences, and your ability to build one. And both size and type of acquaintances and friends determine the quality, diversity and amount of resources you can potentially access. A well-known example is that any person in the world is connected to any other person in the world through six or fewer degrees of separation. This was popularized with the example of Hollywood actor Kevin Bacon and the statement that any person in the world would need a maximum of six introductions to connect to him. The third concept is the nature of the relationship between you and others in your network. The quality of relationships determine how much of the potential access to resources embedded in someone's social network he or she can actually realize. You may be friends with some people in your network. You may hold a lot of respect for others. Or you may not like yet others in your network. Relationships can involve trust and trustworthiness, norms, obligations, expectations or feelings of closeness. So while you are theoretically only six or less degrees away from Kevin Bacon, it doesn't actually mean that the relationships in your network lend themselves to get connected to him. All in all, social capital emerges as an increasingly important concept in computing, in particular in social computing. We decide after considering ratings and reviews, we build social networks, and there's hardly anything today we cannot link, like or share. It's the power of social capital that drives development and adoption of viral consumer technology solutions in the modern world. And whereas in the early days of computers they were restricted to nerds, social computing providing and leveraging social capital opened computing up for the rest of us.